Let's try to do art again. We're gonna do art in this video. Not gonna hurt myself either. We're gonna stay intact and we're just gonna do art. This is gonna be a full on sculpture, abstract. That's just off the top of my head. This is a trout, I think. We'll see. I'm gonna take things just by ear, whatever I want to do, whatever I feel like doing for this is what it's gonna be. I've always been like, there's purpose behind what I'm making, even if it's just a little bit. But this is just make something for the sake of it looking good. This will not be a realistic piece. Like I'm gonna paint it like lure paint schemes. That's what I like painting. Bright, crazy, you know, fire tiger, abstract stuff. Art. I'm getting a pretty good vision of this though. That I think this is gonna be pretty insane when I'm done with it. I've always wanted to make a fish sculpture, like as clean and as nice as I can in my own style. Might be a new thing. I had that blade for two years. Little eighth inch blade for two years. It's kind of sad. I have to go get another. What is it with the bandsaw? What is it? Always a problem with the bandsaw. At least that didn't snap and hit my finger. That can happen. The blade breaks somewhere in this area and zips through and slaps your finger real hard. Never happened to me, but I've heard of that happening. I th this is an eighth inch thick blade and like a lot of teeth per inch. I think I wanna try less teeth per inch on an eighth inch blade. That's what I've been using. We'll see what I go get. I think I got the exact same blade because it was the only eighth inch, 93 and a half inch blade that they had. And boy, did they tie a knot into this twist wire thing. Jeez, what the heck? What did you do? Okay, let's put this on correctly. What a good start to a video. All right, it's on there. Fresh blade. You know what, I'm just gonna cut it out this way and then I'm gonna cut it out that way. It's what I'm used to. It's gonna be pretty hardcore. Gotta raise this up to the tallest point. Right there. I redrew a profile from the top that I want. And of course, I'm going to cut that. Sorry, <laughs> I just got you guys all dusty. But look at this. Art. Nothing functional about this, unless pleasing your eyes is a function, which it might be. Maybe there is function to art. The function of art is to please one's senses. Or maybe it's just to evoke any kind of emotion from one's senses. I'm not gonna do fun facts about art. Too many people are gonna think I'm wrong. To be able to appreciate anything that you feel or think while looking at something. Art, there you go, fun fact right there. Boom. I'm one for trying hard though, and learning a fine art. Yourself, learn art yourself, and be the best you can. Not just the best you can, be the best at what you do. And learn it yourself. Life lessons from, I'm not even a bait maker anymore, I'm just, Somebody who carves weird fish stuff. No. Life lessons. You're welcome. There. Everything is smooth. I need to cut these fins and make them look nice. Ah, dust, man. Where's my saw? Where's my saw? Where's my cape, brother? Where's my chago? There we go. Let's cut some stuff. Ooh. Just 
squeeze through my Put it in the vise. Somebody's calling me. Oh, it's Chels. Hello? Hi. Are you busy? Nope, not busy. What's up? Anywho, let's get back to work. Where's my hammer? Where is my hammer? Okay, I got my hammer. So it's kind of like a convex thing I gotta be doing. Whoops, Bob Saget. Well, I can just make this top thin more thin and carve that out of there. Can't believe I didn't realize I was doing that. Did I just do it again? Whatever, I made it extra thick so I can make mistakes like this. Let's just go with that, it's fine. I still remain dignified. That in there tight. Got a lot of wood to remove. Ooh, you guys are bright. There is the dorsal fin. I need to turn the ISO down. There we go. Where am I going? Oh, wow, okay, okay. Don't do that. I'm talking to myself, not you guys. You guys are okay. These fins are kind of like, they're gonna look wavy along with the body. I just need to leave enough material to be able to do that. I can always come back with super glue and baking soda too. That's right, there is always a use for super glue and baking soda no matter what you're doing. There's the other one. Now I'm gonna do this one real quick, give me a sec. Everything, put the knife down, everything is roughly chopped out. The tail fin's still very fat. I'm leaving it that way, so I got a lot to carve. These two fins down here are still really fat, but I'm leaving it. I might want them to like kind of tuck under and curve, so I'm leaving some material like that. Now I'm just gonna take a knife and start hacking away at it. You may notice I haven't been drawing any lines. I don't need symmetry with this. I just need it to look very nice, so. Lines are kind of unnecessary if you have some confidence in your, you know, ability to make it symmetrical on each side and look that way. I'm not really worried about it. I'll probably be carving this for the next hour. Even when I'm done with this, it's all going to be really rough. For so many years I hated this river. Yeah, I hate it again right now. Do you? Yep. This thing requires a lot of carving. Right now I'm doing something pretty specific. You don't want just 90 degree chamfers, like it's flat on the top and it's flat on the side and it's just round on the corners. You want shape to all of this. Like you wanna be carving all the way down to the middle of the body so that so the shape goes like out, turns in, turns even more on the top, does the same thing on the other side. I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. But just as a rule of thumb, when you're trying to make something look natural, you do carve a ton of wood off just the sides, which would have otherwise just been flat. It's the next day and I drew some stuff. Drew some lines. That's gonna be the gill pattern. I have some ideas for the paint that I wanna put on this, but once I get the carvings on here, then we'll see for sure. I even tried to add a little, I don't know, body ridge detail. I guess that's what you'd call that. There's a little bit of different shape along the body. It's not just one homogenous blob. There's like skeletal detail and stuff. Looks really good so far. I'm gonna drill these eye sockets next though. Still have a lot of half-inch dead meat customized, and I'm gonna use those for this. 
Dead Meat Customs on Instagram. Go check him out. Makes great lure eyes. But it's time to bring a very pointy sharp knife to this sculpture's face. Where's my utility knife? Here comes the detail. I don't know if you can tell the lines that I did score, but I only scored the big chunky stuff. You score the big chunky stuff, well, you can do it however you want. This is art, so do what you want. But you score, the, what I do is I score the big chunky stuff, carve that, and then I carve detail on top of the chunky stuff, or carve detail into the chunky stuff. I invite you to figure out a better way to do it. I'm not the best carver out there. I'm always trying to improve when it comes to this. Then again, I mostly just try to use other things that I'm better at, like I'll paint instead of carve every scale into this, you know? I'll just figure out a cool paint scheme to put on it, you know? But this at the same time will give me good practice and I'll get better at carving. You want to see a good carver, check out Solar Falls channel, or Solar Baits. I think it's just Solar Baits. Let me make sure. You go on YouTube. Well, you are on YouTube. When you're done watching this video, type in Solar Baits and watch his videos. He is an absolute master carver and lure maker. He's been doing the YouTube thing longer than me and the lure making thing in general. Mm, 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 mm. I love basswood. I'm gonna be carving these gill plates to where they are pronounced and sticking out. Deep carvings, because I can. And this is art. I'm enjoying this. You can just do whatever you want, you know? You don't have to worry about shape and function. I'm gonna change my channel name to Marling Wood Carving and a little bit of Bates. Marling Wood Carving, Marling Basswood Carving, and one day's. There we go. If this is the first video of mine you've ever seen, it probably makes no sense. That's what tells me it's a 360 engine. Yeah. yeah. It was if it was a F40 engine. Just starting to add some detail on the gills. This is gonna look great painted. I'm gonna go crazy on the paint. There is a ton of sanding left to do, but we're getting there. Oh, I gotta do the tail fin spines too. I'm gonna use a different technique that I've never done before, using my Dremel and a thin spinny bit. And that's what I'm gonna do. That is a pretty interesting carving. I'm, I tell you what, I'm really liking this. No, that is not a lead hole. That's what I'm gonna use to mount this thing on a stand when it's done. I decided to drill it now because I need something to hold this bait with. I'm gonna be going through a process for the next 24 hours, I think. Um, I need to seal this wood. This can's about to explode. There's pressure on it. We're good, wasn't that bad. This is a sanding sealer. You must apply and then wait a long time for it to dry completely. Sand it again and repeat. Maybe five times, four or five. We'll see. It's pointless to try to guess how many times right now. You just have to see. But between coats of this, it puts a small, like a thin film of plastic around your bait or on your bait. And this is not a bait, this is a sculpture. It's a wood carving sculpture. And uh, you have to re-sand everything, like every detail, make sure your details are still there. And also once the grain's stabilized, you can get better detail into your bait. This isn't a bait, this is a sculpture, than just the bare wood allowed. So yeah, go back and redefine your details and sand everything smooth along the way. It's hard. 
It's set. It's a little bit later. This stuff dries quick. And it's on to my first round of sanding. Every detail. I'm gonna be painting this tomorrow. And how slash what to paint this is still up in the air. Hey man, shout out to everybody that makes fish sculptures and makes them look extremely realistic. I'm just trying to make something off the top of my head that looks cool. But to mimic nature, it is a futile pursuit to begin with. It, I don't even want to try a lot of the time. I get more enjoyment out of just making something that I think of. But yeah, what I was saying, I don't know exactly what I'm painting this yet. I'm, I could go with some super, super bright fluorescent colors for spots, or I could even do stripes. I could do like a tiger trout. I could do a fire tiger trout. Lure paint schemes is what I want on this kind of stuff. A carving that looks like it could potentially be a fish, like a real fish, with lure paint schemes on it. That's my style, I think. That's actually really cool to me. But let me know a lure paint scheme that you wanna see on this wood carving sculpture. I have no preference in my mind right now of what to paint this, so if you give me a good idea, there's a strong potential I could use it. On to the next. We're gonna stay intact and we're just gonna do art. Somewhere in this area. Oh, sorry. You're welcome. Did I just do it again? Oh, oh wow, okay. Everything, put the knife down. I love basswood. It's hard. Never happened to me, but I've heard of that happening. 